Hello there, how's it going? Glad you're back. Today we're going to be continuing down the Spire of Allervane and we're going to be talking about the Enforcer, perhaps the Black Sheep of Spy Weapons. The Enforcer has had quite a storied history within the game. When it was first introduced, I mean, it was, well, borderline overpowered. I mean, it had a straight damage buff. Oh, oh no. <clears throat> I mean, it had a straight damage buff with random crits, while its main counterbalance was merely a half second longer cloak time. No firing speed penalty or accuracy penalty. In fact, if I remember correctly, even then the Enforcer was more accurate than the stock revolver, as it is now. It also shot as fast as the stock revolver. It was a great time to be a spy main. Now the Enforcer is hardly used by anyone as, well, literally every other spy revolver exists and is better suited for the job. That's not to say the Enforcer is as completely useless as the name tag on mine would suggest, though. It can still pierce damage resistances, which will only come in handy against vaccinator medics, because the other forms of damage resistance, the Fist of Steel, the Battalion's Backup, the 20% resistance offered to a cloak spy, etc., cannot be pierced by the Enforcer. I'm not sure if this is a bug or intentional, but no one valve, it's a bug. Back in the day, this was probably as close to a direct upgrade, both on paper and in practice, as you will ever see. But I don't want to spill the beans right out of the gate, do I? That's what the video's for. Anyway, let's take a trip down the Enforcer's rabbit hole, shall we? The Enforcer was added to the game as part of the Uber update. You know, the update that inundated the game with free to play. Its original stats were simply 20% damage bonus, half a second increase in the time you need to cloak. As you can imagine, this is stupid overpowered. It gives you a straight damage bonus with random criticals, and all you had to do was take a half a second longer to cloak. There was no reason to use any other revolver the spy had, except maybe the ambassador for the headshot crits. But I mean, why would you want to bother with all the extra work of having to aim for the dude's head when you can do an extra 20% damage with the occasional fair and balanced crit thrown in in exchange for not even a counterbalance? Once Valve was flooded with complaints by literally everybody but spy mains about the Enforcer, they attempted to scale it back a little bit. Alright, so now we're moving into the second phase of the Enforcer's life, where it still served as a viable combat revolver and was actually kind of balanced. I mean, it is extremely hard to balance a straight damage bonus, but they did it fairly well with this iteration of the gun, I must say. This version of the Enforcer only offered its 20% damage bonus when you were undisguised, meaning if you fired directly out of a disguise, the first shot would do normal revolver damage. In addition, its firing speed was slowed to that of the Ambassador, as well as its right to roll for random crits revoked. I mean, it is extremely hard to balance a straight damage bonus in a way that is both interesting and fun for the person using it, but not downright unfun and irritating to play against. For example, the direct hit does this by forcing you to directly or nearly directly hit your opponents with the rockets. If you don't, you won't do any damage at all. With this design, the Enforcer filled a niche, and it filled it quite nicely. It played a role for the folks who wanted to play Gun Spy, but not have to go through the countless hours of training and pound glass after glass of NyQuil and Red Bull to learn how to aim the Ambassador well. It wasn't perfect, but it was far better than what Valve did with a steaming turd and call it a weapon that's coming up next. Suck my white ass ball! And all of a sudden, we arrive at what the Enforcer is today. That is one big pile of shit. I mean, it's not as completely useless as the name tag on mine would suggest. You can pierce vaccinator medic's resistances and get one shot with an extra 20% damage, but other than that, it's just a stock revolver without the ability to gain random bursts of skill and fires at a slower rate. It is, however, more accurate than the stock revolver, as it fires slower and it hits its perfect shot cooldown at a faster rate than other revolvers. Just a sidebar, in case you didn't know, every weapon in TF2, I, I mean, believe everyone except maybe like the minigun or something, fires a perfectly accurate shot the first time you fire it. And then, every subsequent shot, random spread takes over. In its current state, the Enforcer, although not unserviceable, could definitely use some improvement geared towards what it was meant to do, which is be a direct combat revolver. When you equip this weapon, you are using a revolver, not your knife. Bearing that in mind, let's go over a rework I have thought of that will make the Enforcer both fill the gun spy niche, but not be outright overpowered like the original iteration was. Well, off to visit your mother! I have only one idea for how you would take the Enforcer and make it better without making it overpowered. It is simply to lower the damage bonus from 20% to 15, but have it at all times. In addition, it can still pierce resistances, fires as slow, and doesn't roll for crits. This will make it a serviceable counter to the Vaccinator Medics, as well as a bit more useful as a general purpose combat revolver. The damage bonus is present, but not nearly as powerful as it is now. 
the Enforcer is meant to be not used as a backup weapon, but as a primary. Sure, people can say it's annoying to fight, but let's be real here. A good spy is inherently annoying to fight in and of himself. The whole design of the class is built on being an annoyance to the other team by picking their key targets and giving your team intel about them. This simply makes the Enforcer better at what it was designed to do. Give the spy a revolver he can use as his primary with a lower skill floor than the Ambassador. I mean, let's face it, the Ambassador, even pre-nerf, is an extremely difficult gun to use effectively. It takes hundreds of hours of practice to get anywhere near good with it, and me being the kind of person who wasn't willing to put that kind of time into a single weapon, found the nerf to be extremely harsh on people who took the time to learn to use it well. Conversely, body shotting people with any revolver, while requiring decent aim, isn't nearly as hard as going for someone's head. And a revolver that rewards you with a fair damage bonus to help open up a subclass for more players, I'm completely down with and would love to see Valve make their Enforcer great again. But, since we're in the 18-month refractory period between major updates, I wouldn't hold your breath on it. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.